Hello, this is Dr. Mercola, and isn't the title of this video surprising? I mean, after all, how could exposure to sunshine possibly decrease your vitamin D levels? Well, I want to tell you it can, but before I go into that, I want to review something that's even more surprising, and that is the connection between exposure to the sun, vitamin D3, and showering, of all things. It's important to understand that vitamin D3 is a steroid hormone, and it is an oil-soluble hormone. It is formed when ultraviolet B radiation from the sun or a safe tanning bed uh, it is exposed to the surface of your skin, and it converts a derivative of cholesterol, 7-deoxycholesterol, into vitamin D3. Now, that vitamin D3 is on the surface of your skin. It does not penetrate into the bloodstream immediately. It takes a while. And the critical question is, how long does it take? Well, if you're thinking about an hour or two like I did until just recently, you're wrong because the new evidence shows that it takes up to 48 hours, a full two days, before you're going to absorb the majority of the vitamin D that was, ex that was generated by exposing your skin to the sun or a safe tanning bed. So if you are showering with soap, you are going to be eliminating the vitamin D3 and decreasing the amounts and the ben of the vitamin D3 and the benefit it's going to provide. So, so the key, the key is that if you are going to shower after exposing your skin to ultraviolet B wavelengths, then you need to delay washing with soap for about two full days. Now that doesn't mean uh, that you can, that your whole body. Now, typically, what you can you avoid washing your whole body, you can wash under your armpits and in your groin because those are the areas that need to be washed. And uh, you can just wash with water the rest of your body, and that should maintain the majority of vitamin D3 on your skin. But the key is to eliminate. That's why a lot, many people are observing that they're not getting the increasing vitamin D3, D3 levels when they're growing out in the sun. Key, key point. It's also important to avoid showering for a number of other reasons because most, or at least limit the amount of time you're spending in the shower for a number of reasons because uh, most of us shower in municipal water supplies which are loaded with chlorine and fluoride. And chlorine by itself isn't a major issue. It still should be avoided. But the major problem is that the chlorine combines with organic material in the water, forms, forms disinfection byproducts, DPBs for short, like trihalomethanes and uh, uh, indoleacetic acids, and these are very toxic. Some people believe, and investigators, up to 10,000, 100,000 times more toxic than chlorine. And they can, can lead to cancers and a number of other diseases that you don't want. So that's why you really want to limit your exposure to showers um, uh, because these, they're, unless you, you're getting showering in a water supply from a well, they're going to be loaded with these disinfection byproducts. So let's get on to the, the title of this video, how sunshine could possibly lower your vitamin D three levels. Let me tell you how it does that. But before we go into it, it's important to make a distinction here that, as I mentioned earlier, we form vitamin D3 by when the, the UV, UVB interacts with the 7 deoxycholesterol on our skin. There are, there are two primary forms of ultraviolet radiation that we need to know about, and that is UVA and UVB. And uh, the, of course, the UVA is a longer wavelength, and it's more easily penetrating things, be, the uh, materials, beca and, like the uh, atmosphere and windows. Now, this is where it gets interesting because most of contemporary culture are modern day cavemen. We work inside and we are not outdoors. Of course, our ancestors spent time outdoors. It wasn't until recently, really, until the Industrial Revolution, where um, we th th had the development of windows that were mass produced. Prior to that time, uh, windows were very costly and only the wealthy could afford them. So when people worked indoors, they really weren't being exposed to uh, having sunlight filtered through a uh, win window glass. The key point here is that window glass will effectively filter out the majority of ultraviolet B radiation and it minimally filters out ultraviolet A. Now what does that, what, what's the significance of that? Well, the key here is that ultraviolet A radiation, when it shines on your skin, does not make vitamin D, it makes an anti-vitamin D, and that it, it essentially, that's just a, a joke, of course, but the ultraviolet A destroys vitamin D. It actually destroys the vitamin D in your blood. So it, 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 in some ways this is good because it keeps things in balance and it's one of the, the mechanisms, the protective mechanisms your body has from overdosing of vitamin D when you're outside because the ultraviolet A balances it out and it will keep your, your vitamin D levels from rising too high. But when you get sunlight through 
windows in your office, your home, or your car, you're going to get the ultraviolet A, you're not going to get the ultraviolet B, and the ultraviolet B is what makes the, makes the vitamin D. And ultraviolet A radiation not only destroys vitamin D, but it also increases oxidative stress. It is one of the primary reasons why we have skin cancers, and it increases photoaging of the skin. It also is what causes the tan. You can get vitamin D without any tan because the wavelengths of from 320 to 280 do not stimulate the melanin pigments to produce a tan. Normally, of course, when we get it in from the sun, we're going to get both, so it's not a problem. But the key here is that when you are indoors, you are exposing your skin to sunlight filtered through window glass, that you are increasing your risk of a variety of conditions, primarily increasing the risk of skin cancers because you are destroying your vitamin D3 levels and not increasing vitamin D, D at all. So that is the key. In fact, I would like to, to, sh to share an interesting anecdote on that topic that uh, uh, Dr. Leonard Smith, who's a very prominent integrative medicine physician from uh, Southern For Florida, and wrote to me recently and explained that he uh, has been an avid windsurfer for uh, many years and plays tennis and noticed that his vitamin D, D levels weren't high, so he went on 5,000 units of vitamin D for a while. And that, after several months, only increases D, D levels to uh, approximately 31 nanograms per milliliter. So then he doubled the dose to, to um, 10,000 units per day, and after a few months it went up to 50. Now the interesting thing is that he had accumulated a variety of different skin conditions like uh, actinic or solar keratosis and moles and uh, basal cells, cancers on his skin, and they actually decreased substantially once he increased his vitamin D level. So another anecdotal proof that vitamin D3 is very powerful. But interestingly, as I said earlier, one of the precursors for vitamin D is cholesterol. So that if you are taking drugs like statins or uh, uh, proton pump inhibitors that like Prilosec or Prevacid that are typically used to treat many ulcer conditions, you're going to lower your cholesterol levels, which is going to decrease the, uh, your body's ability to manufacture vitamin D3. So that's another way that you can have lower vitamin D levels. So it, 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 it seems somewhat confusing, and, uh, and there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle. That's why uh, it's, it, I'm just seeking to share as much as, of this, this information as I can for you. So the key here is to get safe sun exposure. You never want to get sunburned through either outside uh, or indoors when you're going to get through a safe tanning bed. And if you, for whatever reason, aren't able to do that, then clearly you're going to want to take some uh, oral or like uh, some, some legal sublingual vitamin D3 like we have available in our store, which is, which is going to really eliminate this whole issue of absorbing the, the the, the vitamin D3 levels f from the skin. So pay attention to it. If you're going to shower, delay your showering with soap for at least two days if you're going to maximize the absorption of vitamin D3 uh, or use uh, an alternate oral vitamin D source. Now, I still do not believe that oral vitamin D is the best way. There's not a doubt in my mind. I strongly and firmly believe that the ideal, the optimal exposure or the route that you should receive your vitamin D3 levels are from going outside in the sun. And second best would be a safe tanning bed. And third best, by default, would be, uh, for convenience and expense, would be an oral supplementation. So hopefully this information is helpful to give you the details you're going to need to access and increase your vitamin D levels to, to maximize the two to 3,000 genes that it, it, that it epigenetically influences and, and optimizes. And these, this is the type of of uh, uh, information you're going to need to help you and your family continue to take control of your health.